Good day, friends. It is Thursday, November 19th. Wow. Once again, this month is flying by. And it's been a busy week around St. Andrews, I'm grateful to say. Lots of things have been going on, like the formalization of budgets, and I've been working on our Presbytery Council, where we're trying to move forward with some new vision. And it's exciting to be doing those things. Believe it or not, it really is. Because through all those avenues, God's work is being done. I'm going to begin today by reading a uh, part of Psalm 19, verses 1 through 9. I'm continuing in um, the message, as I have often been doing lately. And I invite you to listen and look for the word maps, maps in this reading. God's glory is on tour in the skies. God's craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight lectures each evening. Their words aren't heard. Their voices aren't recorded. But their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. God makes a huge dome for the sun, a superdome. The morning sun, a new husband, leaping from his honeymoon bed. The day-breaking sun, an athlete racing to the tape. That's how God's word vaults across the skies, from sunrise to sunset. Melting ice, scorching deserts, warming hearts to faith. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. The decisions of God are accurate down to the nth degree. Thanks be to God for that, the nth degree. Today we are beginning to talk about faith and beliefs. Faith in terms of trust in the giver. Suppose our argument thus far is convincing. Suppose we agree that gratefulness is that fullness of life for which we are all thirsting. Then the task ahead is simple enough to learn to live gratefully. The key question is, how shall we go about that? Earlier on, when we spoke of learning to live prayerfully, I suggested that we take the most prayerful moments in our daily life and start from there. This gives us the advantage of starting with something we already know from experience. In certain situations, we have experienced an inner attitude that we consider prayerful. Now the task is to approach not only some, but all situations in that attitude. At least we already know what it is that we want to make our own in a more sustained way. We know it from the inside. That makes all the difference. We can never learn prayerfulness by mere imitation from the outside. In learning gratefulness, we follow the same pattern. We have experienced moments of gratefulness and therefore we know from within the attitude we want to repeat and maintain. Those moments of deep gratefulness are in fact our moments of true prayerfulness. Moments in which our heart is wide awake. We have already explored this and have come to recognize that prayer and thanks spring from the same root, from the heart. It is those peak experiences of the heart that we must go back, to which we must go back if we want to learn to live gratefully. But wait, I've used an expression that might all too easily be misunderstood. What does it mean to go back to an experience? There are two ways of going back. 
One makes us draw new strength from the past. The other shrivels us up. What makes the difference? Let's put it this way. If I recall a past experience in order to clutch it and suck the last drop of sweetness from it greedily, it will yield nothing but disappointment. If on the other hand, I recall the same experience merely to celebrate it, merely to single it out, to hold it up and to marvel at it once again, it will nourish me again and again. This is how I suggest that we recall the moments in which our heart was wakefully alive. All we know about life in fullness flows from memories of that kind. All that we know about God by experience was given to us in those moments. And is there any kind of religious knowledge worth its name? When religious traditions speak of the divine life within us, they refer implicitly at least to our high points of wakeful awareness, to our mystical experiences. Yes, let us not shy away from that thought we are all mystics. If mysticism is, by definition, the experience of communion with the ultimately real, capital U and R, God, if you feel comfortable with the term, then who can disclaim being a mystic? Unless we had all experiences of this kind, we wouldn't even know what we mean by rock bottom reality. We wouldn't even know, as we have seen, what is means or now, but we do now. Just as we cannot leave contemplation to contemplatives, we cannot leave mysticism to the mystics. It would mean cutting off the roots of human life. By putting mystics on a pedestal in our mind, high out of reach, we, do not, we, do, we don't do justice to them, nor to ourselves either. Paraphrasing what Ruskin said about being an artist, we could say, a mystic is not a special kind of human being, Rather, every human being is a special kind of mystic. I might just as well rise to this challenge and become that unique, irre irreplaceable mystic that only I can become. There would never was and never will be anyone exactly like me. If I fail to experience God in my own unique way, that experience will forever remain in the shadow land of possibility. But if I do, I will know life by the divine life within me. My own tradition has much to say about that life breath of God within us. Christian tradition speaks about God's presence in our hearts under three headings, faith, hope, and love. These terms point to different aspects of one and the same living reality. But remember, we are dealing here with life. Life cannot be neatly sliced and packaged and remain alive. Faith, hope, and love are not three boxes with specified contents, as it were. Rather, they are ways of being alive, aspects of one fullness of life that is our topic. High peaks of aliveness are also always marked by intense gratefulness. Even people whose worldview does not include a divine giver to whom their thanks can be directed often experience deep gratitude in these moments. They experience it no less strongly than others, even though their own gratefulness gets mailed without an address, so to say. In any case, we know from experience that whenever we are truly awake and alive, we are also truly grateful. If then we want to go back, in the right way, to our peaks of wakefulness, to learn gratefulness, a map of some kind would come in handy. It is true that maps can never replace the experience of an explorer, but they do help even the most independent among us. Faith, hope, and love provide us with something like points on a map as we go back to our moments of grateful aliveness. In fact, these points of reference do more than lead us back to an experience. They also point forward toward putting faith, hope, and love into daily practice. But faith, hope, and love rightly understood are three aspects of gratefulness. This use of reference points has another advantage. The map helps us to return to the territory of an actual experience, but in turn, exploration of that territory helps us to update and correct our map. No matter how helpful maps are, 
they remain subject to correction through discoveries made by those who use them in their exploration. Spiritual maps are no exception in this regard. Those of us who know or think we know what our reference points what our reference points signify may find to our surprise that faith, hope, and love acquire new meaning in the process of being compared with data taken from our own experiences of overwhelming gratefulness. Well, how about that? We may have to adjust our maps of faith, hope, and love. Hmm. Sometimes we go kicking and screaming into that adjustment, don't we? I really like this idea here. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. Let's pray. God, we pray today for all of us in this world striving for gratefulness striving for those deep and wonderful experiences where we connect with you and all of the universe and we know deep in our deepest of being that we are yours, that we are loved, and that we are so grateful. We are grateful because all of this has been given, given as Brother Stendhal Rass says, as a gift. And we respond to gifts with a thank you, with gratitude, with gratefulness. It is very reformed, gracious God, to respond to your great gift of grace and love, hope and faith with our gratitude. So we are living through a month of gratitude at least in the secular calendar, because really in our calendar, gracious God, we know that great gratitude is part of every day and maybe hopefully almost all day, every day. We pray for all those who are striving for faith today and striving to understand gratitude so that their understanding of faith may broaden. We ask today, gracious God, that you work in all of our hearts to be more open, more willing to looking at new maps, at adjusting old maps, which God, we find hard to do. We don't like adjusting our old maps. We like our old maps. We like the way it has been. But you, God, are a God of new maps. <laughs> You keep showing us new maps of Jesus Christ. We pray that we can follow in his footsteps. Follow in a way that will be our own map, our own map in following Christ. For you have made each of us unique, and we are grateful. We pray our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Every day this month, I'm saying something for which I'm grateful. I hope you are too. I'm writing them down so that I won't repeat them. And uh, today, my mother always tells me that I have been born with the adventure gene in the family, just like she got. I'm so grateful to love adventure because it takes me in places. Sometimes I don't really want to go, but I go anyway especially if God is leading me. Uh, so today, I am grateful for adventure, and I'm grateful for maps, and I want to be grateful every day for new maps, for maps that are being adjusted in my life. I hope you can pray for gratitude in the same way. God's 
great joy and blessing be with you today.